Hey guys, this is Adam and I have a very cool topic for today because if you're Azure administrator or you're developing Azure applications, you should know how to manage your infrastructure from code. It provides us several benefits when migrating across multiple environments or deploying multiple resources. This is introduction to Azure resource management templates. Stay tuned. Before we jump to templates, we need to talk about what is Azure Resource Manager. It's a centralized service for resource management in Azure. But how does it work? Well, let's talk about how can you deploy resources today in Azure. There's a several way to deploy resources in Azure, like Azure Portal, PowerShell, CLI, and REST Client. For PowerShell and CLI, you're using SDKs, but pretty much all those interfaces are communicating with a single resource manager endpoint and it's your centralized layer for resource management in Azure. It is secured by default because it is secured with Azure Active Directory, so it doesn't matter which interface you are using, it is still secured the same way. Once the request is received, Resource Manager talks to something called Resource Provider. Every single resource in Azure has its own resource provider, and that resource provider handles everything related to that specific resource. In Azure, everything is managed using a hierarchical scope. And the scope goes from the management groups, where you group multiple subscriptions, to the subscription, a unit of billing for your subscription. Usually you separate subscriptions into development and production environment, and each subscription contains resource groups, a logical grouping of resources, usually representing your applications. And underneath on the very lowest level are resources, and those are the ones we're gonna be deploying today and we're gonna be doing that on a resource group level. One important thing here to note is that how you separate your management groups, subscription and resource groups is really up to you. You can separate them by regions, departments, applications, modules, or however you want. It's up to you to create that governance plans for Azure and manage your resources appropriately. Now we can actually move to the templates themselves. They are a unified language for you to manage your resources in Azure using declarative approach and very simple files. The way they work is very simple. Imagine you have a resource group in which you have virtual machine and a storage account. You can actually create a very simple template to deploy all that in a single go. That template would look like this. It's a simple JSON format with some properties that you need to fill. Basic properties are always the same and there are a few that are mandatory, like schema. Schema defines uh, what are the properties available for the rest of your template. So this pretty much defines how the rest of your template will react. And this is very important if you're using tools like Visual Studio Code with IntelliSense. As you see, the schema has a date in it, indicating what is the current version of the schema that you're working in. The next field is content version. Content version is a simple field that allows you to version your templates. While it is important to version your templates, if you're using tools like Git, it's not that important to keep this field up to date. Next, you have the most important section, which is the resources section. It's an array of JSON objects where each object describes the service that is going to be deploying. And you can have multiple resources deployed using the single template. Additionally, you have parameters. This section is optional, but if you want to parameterize your template, you can use this to pick up some input parameters for the template. And if you want to calculate something dynamically, you have also variable sections. In this section, you can calculate some dynamic properties during the execution of the template itself based on your input parameters and other variables. You also have output section, which allows you to return some properties and information from the template execution and also function section. If you're using expressions a lot, you can define a single expression in here and reuse across your template. As you see, the general structure of the template is not that complicated. So let's look at the JSON objects describing a service. If we take, for instance, the storage account, if you go to the portal right now and start creating this, you're going to see a set of properties that describe a storage account. And if you would create that storage account exactly the same way using the template, it would look like this. So what are the key properties that you always need to fill? The first one is the type. The type describes what service are you deploying. It's a mandatory field and it's a concatenation of a resource provider name, in this case, Microsoft Storage, and then you have the name of the service itself. In this case, it's a storage account. Additionally, you have an API version. As I was talking about, resource manager talks to resource providers. And in order for Azure to be able to change over time, because this is a cloud and it changes all the time, 
An API version is introduced, so whenever there's a major change in the service, a new API version is provided. In this case, it's 2019-06-01, which has a specific set of properties that need to be supplied. You should always try to keep up to date with this, because you will see more new fields being exposed and new features available for you to use within the templates. But also remember there's always a risk. If you update it and some field changed the name or disappeared, your templates might break. So always do it with caution. Every service that you deploy needs to have a name, so it's a standard property that always needs to be filled. Also location, a location of your data center where this service will be deployed. Beyond this point, every service in Azure has its own unique properties, so you always need to check what kind of properties you need to supply for each service. In this case, the SKU name is a combination of the performance and replication. In this case, it's a standard, locally redundant storage. You also have account kind and access tiers that you need to define in order to deploy storage account. There are many more properties available for this storage account, but this is the minimum in order to replicate what you see in the portal itself. As you see, it's just few properties and you're ready to go. There are also multiple ways how you can manage your deployments. You can have one template which will define all the resources for your application and all the dependencies between those resources. Another way to do it is using separate ARM templates. So you can have an ARM template for each resource you're deploying. While you still can maintain that reference ability so you can define the relationship between the resources and pull some information from one to another. You can also nest the templates. So you can have a master templates which will refer to sub templates for each resource so you can have a clean and very separated approach for your resource management. You get a lot of benefits when using ARM templates because first of all you manage your infrastructure but also policies, roles, management groups and other stuff as a code using declarative syntax and you get repeatable very consistent results. You have orchestration so you can ensure the quality and the order of the resources that are created. With built-in validation, if I can make some common mistakes, a resource provider will immediately tell you about it. You can have modular files with those nested templates. Everything you deploy is tracked so you can very easily see what was deployed and when. And there's a lot of supports from other external tools for development of the ARM templates. There's a lot of additional features for the ARM templates themselves. You can define functions, use expressions to dynamically parameterize your templates, use references to pull information across services, use export to export existing resources as an ARM template, use loops to define multiple resources in a single go, and deploy resources conditionally. What are the typical scenarios? Of course, the most typical and the most common scenario is application development and maintenance of that application, but also CI-CD for those applications. So if you're moving across environments using ARM templates, you can ensure very consistent results every single time. But also if you're administrator and managing your Azure environment, you can do governance using ARM templates. So you can define policies, roles, management groups, and other stuff using the same language. So you're just investing into learning that once and you can manage pretty much everything in Azure using this language. This is the demos that I prepared for you. We're gonna start with building templates using Visual Studio Code, and I will show you what are the resources available for you to learn what properties do you need to supply for each resource. I will show you a couple of the options, and I will tell you which is the best one in my opinion. Next, I will show you all the options for the deployment, starting from PowerShell, through CLI, CloudShell, GitHub, and the portal. And I'm gonna finish off by showing you how can you parameterize your templates using parameters, variables and functions. So let's go into the portal. But today's demo is not about things that we're going to be doing in the portal. So I'm just going to quickly show you what do I have in the portal. And as you see, it's pretty empty because everything we're going to be deploying today is using Visual Studio Code. Before we begin, let's talk about the setup. The most important thing that you will need in order to perform this demo yourself is the extension from Microsoft called Azure Resource Manager ARM Tools. I'm using this for the IntelliSense and the deployment of the templates. But if you're working with ARM templates a lot, I can highly recommend also this ARM template viewer extension, which allows you to explore your templates visually and quickly check what is being deployed without needing to deep dive into the code. But let's close this for now. So let's deploy a storage account because the storage account is the one of the most simple and straightforward services in Azure and it allows me to show the principle of the ARM template deployments. So let's create a new file, let's call it 01 storage.json. And there are multiple ways how you can start, but for 
initializing of the template, I like to use snippets. And because I used this ARM template extension from Microsoft, I can just type ARM. And notice that there's a resource management template snippet for me to use. So just press enter. And as you see, those are the standard properties that you always need to fill anyway. Now you can actually start deploying the resources. So we need to expand on the resources section in order to create new resources. And we could, for instance, use templates again. So type Azure storage and just press tab. And it generated the template for the storage. And it filled the most important fields for us, like name, type, which is, as I said, resource provider name slash the name of the service, API version, which we're using. As you see, this is pretty old from five years ago. The location, which will be the same as the resource group location. It will automatically add tags. This section is optional, so you can feel free to remove that and define what is the replication type and the performance of your storage. You can actually save this template and deploy it right now. In order to deploy that template, we can use PowerShell. So this is the first option. So you need to run connect az account and connect to your Azure account. Once you're logged in, you can actually very quickly deploy it using PowerShell. You can either do it directly from the terminal or create a very simple script. I will create a 01 storage PS1, which will be the deployment script that we'll use. And within that script, I will do two things. First of all, I will create a group called ARM Introduction 01, and I'm gonna create that resource group in North Europe. And next I will perform deployment using new AZ resource group deployment. I will provide the name of the deployment. So this is not the name of the service, but name of that entire deployment a resource group where the resources will be deployed to and a path to the template file that I just created. So we can now run the script. You can type 01 storage PS1, just run it. And as you see, it created a resource group already. The provisioning state is succeeded and we need to now wait for the deployment. This template will fail and I already seen it failed. So let's look why did it fail. And as you see, the error message is very clear. The storage account named storage account one is already taken. So let's quickly fix that. Let's change this into AM demo store 01A. Let's save the template and simply rerun the script very quickly. After about a minute, the script is completed. I see I pressed something too fast, but we can see the result. ARM template introduction, New storage deployment succeeded. It was incremental upload, which I will show you in a second how it works. So we can actually go back to the portal and review the results. So let's go to the portal. And those are the resource group that we had previously. We can actually refresh now to find our ARM introduction 01, within which you can see AM demo store 01 already there. One important thing, sometimes there's a delay in the portal after the deployment succeeds just wait just like 30 seconds to a minute for resources to appear. Let's go into the storage. You can also review the properties that you submitted during the deployment, like a standard performance and locally redundant storage, which if you find in the template was pretty much this place here, standard local redundant storage. So let me show you one of the things. If you go to the configuration of the storage, you can see that you can change this to GRS. Let's try doing that using the incremental deployment. So you only need to go here and change the standard LRS to GRS, which is Geo Redundant Storage. Save this and rerun the script. After a couple of seconds, the incremental script runs successfully. So we can go back to the portal and review the results. Let's just refresh the page and see the results. And the result is that it didn't actually update anything. Without deep diving into why it didn't, the overall reason is because we used very old API version here. So let's fix that and let's show you how to use the good practices in order to create resources like storage accounts. Before I delete this section, I want to create a new empty one and show you how you can use IntelliSense to achieve the same result. The first thing you do is type a type of the resource and just press tab, colon, and you're gonna get IntelliSense about all the available resources, providers and resources for this schema. In which case I want to use the Microsoft storage and storage account resource provider. Once I do that, every other property that I will get in the IntelliSense is just for this resource provider. So I can type API version, colon, 
And notice that we are using a very old, pretty much one of the oldest available versions for the API. So let's use the latest one, 2019. Now let's define the name for our storage. And let's name it pretty much the same like the last one, except 02. And what are the other properties that we need to fill in? We definitely need to fill in location. Location. And from the available locations, I'm going to choose North Europe. If you want, you can always use this expression from here to get the same location as your resource group. What are the other properties? We want this standard GRS. So we can type SKU. This is an object. As you see, there's an intelligence saying that this is an object. You need to open that object and within that object, you need to specify the name, colon, and you get the list of available options. And this is the standard GRS. So let's start with the LRS first and update it to GRS. So notice already the differences. Previously, you were specifying properties and the account type. Now you're specifying SKU and the name. So how would you know what are the properties for each version of the API that you need to fill in? Luckily, Microsoft actually delivers this list. So in the portal, let's open another tab and paste in the URL for the resource provider documentation. In here, you can find every single resource provider in Azure and the API versions for those resource providers, including the list of the fields. So let's type storage that we're currently deploying. Let's search for the storage accounts. It's here. And as you see for the storage provider, you have all the available versions. And for each version, you have definition of all the available properties for this resource provider. While this is a lot of properties that you could potentially want to fill, definitely check out the property values description below. So how would you still know based on this, what are the mandatory objects? Well, the documentation specifies what are the required properties here. It is always not so straightforward. So there's also another great resource. And this resource is even better because there's a GitHub from Microsoft, which has something called Azure Quick Start Templates. It's a list of templates for all the resource providers in Azure with a lot of, a lot of samples for each one of them. Just type Ctrl F storage and search for the storage account samples. And as you see, there's a storage account create here. We're going to get back here later, but the file of the interest right now is the Azure deploy. This is the file containing ARM template. And while it has some extra fields like parameters, let's go back to the resource section down below and you can see the resource section definition for the storage account. While this is good because it also shows you the available properties and very often shows you what are the sample fields that you can fill in here. So we know from both of those resources like this, like that we need a kind because it's a required field and this sample also shows that. So you can use one of the two. So let's grab this property. And let's go back to the ARM template. Let's add this property. Press control space for the IntelliSense and you're gonna get the list of available options here. The latest one is storage V2. And again, if you're just starting with Azure, it's hard to understand which is the latest, which is the most important option to choose from. That's why it's nice to combine the knowledge from the GitHub samples and the documentation of the resource providers. Right now we can actually remove the old resource, save this template, and run this deployment. So let's uh, scroll this up and let's run the storage 01 deployment again. After about a minute deployment finished, we can go to the Azure portal and review our results. So let's put this on a full screen, go to the resource groups, go to our ARM introduction 01 and refresh to see the new resource. Remember, there's always a small delay. With just 30 seconds more for the delay, we got the new storage account. And as you see, it's pretty much the same, except it's storage v2, so the latest version. It's locally redundant storage. So we can go back to the template and we run our incremental update. So GRS, we run the template. It succeeded. Go back to the portal and refresh this page. And as you see, very quickly, geo redundant storage. It's this easy to incrementally update your resources. Forgive me the long demo, but I really wanted to stress out how important the API version is when working with ARM templates. Now we can actually start working with parameterization of our template. As you can imagine, hard coding the name for this account is not the best approach. 
because you will need to update your template every time. So you can actually introduce parameters and you do it within this section. And this section is pretty easy. What you need to do is you need to define a parameter name, like a storage name. This parameters is always an object. And within that object, you need to define a type. So what kind of type is this? This can be an array, boolean, integer object, or just string. So for our case, this is the string because this is just a simple name. You can do additional validations like minimum length of three characters, maximum length of 24, which is exactly the minimum and the maximum name for the storage accounts. Once you do that, you have that parameter and you can already use it within your template. And to get the parameter value, you need to call a function. And to call a function with an ARM template, you need to remove that value, put a square brackets, and within the square brackets, you can use functions. If you again press Ctrl and space to get IntelliSense, you will get a list of all the available functions. And the functions for parameters is called parameters. And you need to simply supply the name of the parameter. And as you see, IntelliSense also picks up what are the available values for you within this template. So you just press enter and right now your template is already parameterized. So let's see how does the execution of the template changes. Because right now you need to supply an input parameter. And it's fairly easy. If you're going to go to this new AZ resource group deployment, you just need to supply the parameter. There's a couple ways to do that, but the most simple one is just add additional line, type dash and type storage name. It actually fills in again using the IntelliSense, what are the new parameters available in the template. So you can provide am demo store 03 a and run this deployment again. So let's run it. The deployment finished, we can see what was the result. The result was succeeded. We can go back to the portal to our resource group to see the result. As you see, O3 account was created successfully using parameters. It's this easy to supply parameters into your template. So let's add one more parameter to our template. So let's go to the parameter section and add storage SKU parameter with a list of allowed values. This is a list of static values which you can supply to storage SKU. This is very good because it runs a validation before you deploy template and also has additional features. So let's quickly add it and parameterize the SKU. Again, square brackets to run the function use the parameters and use the storage SKU. Again, you just changed the parameters and you can supply again the new parameter storage SKU standard GRS. Once this is done, you're pretty much ready to go. If you would pretty much provide incorrect values like standard GRS 02 here and try to run the script again, let's pull this up a little bit and run the script again you would see validation failed during the deployment because it will tell you that provided value is not correct for the storage SKU. Standard allowed values within this template are standard LRS and the rest of the list provided in your template. This is how you can ensure that whoever is using your templates are providing the correct values every single time so that you don't have to worry about all the possible outcomes for this template. So far I'm deploying everything using PowerShell. Let's see what are the other options that you have. So for instance, you can use Cloud Shell. And using Cloud Shell is very simple. Let's copy the template that we created so far and let's go back to Azure portal. You can actually open Cloud Shell here, expand this, and you can either use Bash or you can use PowerShell. In this case, I'm gonna leave it as Bash and use Azure CLI. So first of all, I need to get a template here. I can either upload the file or I can use built-in editor within Cloud Shell. Just type code and you're gonna get a similar experience to Visual Studio Code. Just paste your template, save it, provide a name, that's gonna be 01 storage JSON. Save it. Once this is done, you can actually either close the editor by hitting Ctrl Q and just simply run the command. And running deployment from Azure CLI is as easy as it is in PowerShell. Just type AZ group create and then simply AZ group deployment create name of the resource group, the template file for our file, and since I didn't provide a storage name, I was prompted to give one. So am demo store 04 a just press enter. What is the storage SKU that we need to provide as well? That's gonna be standard LRS, press enter. But even though it asks you to provide a storage SKU 
as a string, it actually asks you for a number. So just provide one for the first option and run the deployment for the standard LRS. As you see the deployment finish, so you can close the Cloud Shell. And the script that I provided in CLI should create a new resource group. So let's refresh that. ARM introduction 01 CLI. And within it, you can see AM Demo Store 04A. But there's also one more way you can actually deploy in Azure by hitting create resource, typing template, and you're gonna find a marketplace item for template deployment, where you hit create, and you can actually provide your own template here, which gives you a small template editor where you simply paste in your template. If you want, you can provide parameters file, hit save, and it will give you UI for your template. Notice that it actually detects the parameters from your template and allows you to supply the name. So you simply check the resource group, provide the name AM Demo Store 05A, SKU Standard LRS. Notice that you cannot type because this is a dropdown. Since you provide a list of allowed values, it gives you a nice UI for you just to pick from the dropdown. Select I agree to purchase the service and hit purchase. Once the deployment is finished, you can actually go to the resource group and find the service that you just deployed. Hit refresh and it should be there in just a couple of seconds. Everything that we're doing, whenever it's portal, whenever it's CLI in Cloud Shell, PowerShell, whatever you're doing is always tracked. And you can actually find every single deployment that you did within the deployment section. But notice something interesting. We deployed multiple times, but there's only two entries here. Because every time we deployed, we supplied the same name, which overridden the history for the previous deployment. So make sure to randomize this deployment name, add some sort of date or timestamp or whatever, just to make sure that you track every single deployment using the separate name. But when you do, you can actually go and review that deployment by hitting this deployment name and getting the information about the deployment itself. You can see what was deployed, whether the child resources deployed as part of this template. You can review what were the inputs provided for that deployment of the template. What were the outputs? In this template, we don't have any outputs. And what was the template itself? So you can review exact template that was deployed in your resource group. But did you know if you will actually go back to the template repository, the quick start templates from Microsoft, if you go back here, there's also deploy to Azure button here and visualize. So let's see how this works. Let's find another template. Maybe let's go back to the quick start templates and search for the function app. I want to deploy function app because it will create a function app and underlying resources, which will be tied together. So we're going to deploy multiple services using a single template. I'm going to use this function app create dynamic, which depend based on a description here, will deploy a function app with a consumption plan. And we can review the template or we can hit deploy to Azure. When you hit it, notice that you will be redirected to the portal, which will take this template that you just selected as an input. You can review the template by hitting edit template and see that on the left hand side, it will deploy a storage account. It will take you down here to the definition. It will deploy a service plan for the function app. It will deploy the function app itself, but also application insights. So it deploys four resources to Azure. You can review what are the variables that will be used to create this resource. You can review input parameters that are required. So you need to supply the application name, storage account type, location, runtime, and things like this. But additionally, it uses functions like this list keys, which will list the storage account keys that are that is deployed with this service and automatically input this as application settings on the function app. So let's run this template. Let's hit save, review what do we need to provide. As always, resource group name. In this case, I'm going to create new one, ARM introduction 02. We need to provide application name. Everything else we can leave as default. So I'm going to call it AM demo app 04A, just to be sure it's a unique name. Agree to the terms and hit purchase. Now I can just simply wait for the deployment to be finished. Once the provisioning is finished, you can either go to the resource group or hit on the template deployment name to review what was deployed. You can do either by reviewing deployment steps to see what was deployed in what particular order and when. You can review the input files that were provided to create this deployment. You can review the outputs. There were none. 
and always review the template. You will always find this also in the resource group. So don't worry about it if you're gonna lose this. It's always under this deployment blade. And as you see in the resources, we have three resources, actually four. This is what we're expecting. And this is how easy you actually can deploy everything in Azure using ARM templates. And if you go to the function app, to platform settings, to configuration, you can find Azure Web Job Storage. And if you go to Advanced Edit, you're gonna find the storage keys and the account name for the storage account that was provided and created during that deployment. This is how easy it is to reference, parameterize your templates, but there's a lot, a lot more than you can achieve with ARM templates. Okay, we need to stop here because there's so much more we could learn about Azure Resource Management, but there's just so little time. But that means next time we're gonna tackle on some more advanced topics for ARM templates. For today, that's it. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more and see you next time.